Hello, it's Lord Slaw here, coming back at you with another video, and the topic of today's is the best to worst key to time stories. So the key to time is a story arc which takes up the entirety of season 16, and I love it, I really do, it's a great season, it's pretty funny, witty, as well as quite engrossing, and it got some great stories with some great atmosphere, at least sometimes, uh, and you know, Graham Williams is really at his best here, while I'm not a fan of season 15 or season 17, this is the exception. I really, really like season 16. I also love the companion in the form of Romana 1, which I'm one of the few people which likes Romana 1 more than Romana 2. I do really like Mary Tam as the actor, and I'm glad she returned for Big Finish until she unfortunately died uh, before she could return and make more Big Finish, which is a bit of a shame. But oh well, uh, let's get into it. So at the worst spot, we have the Armageddon Factor. Yeah, this one is not a very good story. I think sometimes people maybe get a little too much hate, but it is, I would definitely class it as a bad story. It has a lot of problems. So let's kind of, you know, look at it episode wise. Episode 1 to 2 are pretty good because there's some mystery. You don't quite know what's going on. However, early on in episode 3, the mystery is revealed and yeah. Episode 3 and 4 just kind of stagnate. There's just a lot of running around, not much happening, and it's really dull and boring and can't be asked. Five and six, it, it picks up, mainly because of Drax, who's a, actually a really great character who I really enjoy, and I, I wish we'd seen more of Drax, because it seems to be, you know, he was one of the Doctor's school friends, but, oh well. Uh, but yeah, not a very good episode. It just kind of stagnates after the first two episodes, and crawls its way at the end, I think, is the best way to describe it. And plus the Shadow Man, I've forgotten his fucking name, he wasn't a very interesting villain at all. I, I didn't really like him. And I feel that the reveal of the White Guardian being the Black Guardian was a little bit rushed. But, oh well, it's not a very good story. But fortunately, it's the outlier of this season. There's the unknown, which is bad. But it's a shame it had to be the finale. As, you know, on such a good season, you'd kind of want a good finale. So next up on the list, we have The Power of Cruel. So this is another story which people say is quite bad. However, I'm going to disagree here. I quite like the story. It's not great by any stretch of the imagination, but it's still pretty good. It's got your typical Robert Holmes stuff going on. It's got a well-built world with some decent characters. Uh, it's just overall a pretty good experience. I mean, I really like, you know, the whole thing with Swampy's Crawl and all of the drilling stuff. It's It works well, you know. I feel like I understand how this world that Robert Holmes has just, you know, thrown us into works. And that's often what he does so well, and that's why I really like a lot of his stories, because I consider world building to be a very important part of Doctor Who. Uh, and a lot of the ideas he used in this story were actually reused in the case of Adrizani, if you think about it, with all the gun running, double crossing. Because this, more or less, this story stuck around in his mind and played a part in the creation of case of Adrizani, so you got to at least thank it for that. Crow's a pretty good villain, if you can consider him that, because, you know, he's just an animal. Um, and he's bloody huge. I mean, Graham Williams did ask Robert Holmes to create the biggest Doctor Who monster ever. So, yeah, he, he succeeded in that. And I like the whole cruel religion thing on it. It's almost, well, somewhat became a meme for a while amongst my circles, you know, telling people to praise cruel, you filthy driver. But, oh well, not the best episode, but still pretty enjoyable. So at the next spot, we have the Pirate Planet. So this is a pretty good story. It's got that... Douglas Adams kind of thing going on there where it's just really, really funny. The pirate captain and Mr. Fibuli are particularly excellent characters and always an absolute pleasure to watch. I mean, the captain's just absolutely bonkers. The words he speaks are mad and it's got that Douglas Adams charm through and through. It's quite an ambitious story for its time, but unlike many of the other ambitious classic Who stories, it actually kind of manages it through the extensive use of location work, which can sometimes look a bit, little bit jarring, but I think it fits together fairly nicely, at least considering the budget they were on. And it's got a pretty interesting idea, and some of the Tom Bates acting in this story is really good, and it kind of reminds me of the Seeds of Doom, where he's almost torn out of desperation, at least in that one scene when they're talking about the, the planets which get drilled. But yeah, it's a pretty good story, really enjoyable. Some people think it's a little too silly, but... I think once in a while you do need a silly story, even if most of the see most of the stories in this season do have a lot of silly moments. Because hey, it's Graham Williams, but either way, pretty enjoyable story. And uh, yeah, unlike Crawl, I'd say it was great. 
So at the next spot, we have two stories because I love them both so much and I couldn't put one over the other. And they are the Ribos Operation and the Stones of Blood. So let's talk about the Ribos Operation first. So, you know what I was saying about Robert Holmes writing with the power of Crawl, how there's great world building and great characters? Yeah, well, he does that here, but way, way better. I mean, I just love the characters in this story. They're, they're really fun to watch. And the world building is absolutely excellent. I get, you know, the kind of universe we're in, even though we're not given too much, even though we're not shown too much, it manages to convey exactly what's going on here pretty darn well. And it's kind of got that big universe feel, which should be in more of Doctor Who, but I find ever since we met the Time Lords, it isn't. It was ever present in the Hartnell era, mind, and somewhat in the Troughton era, but uh, we've been kind of missing that a bit uh, since then. But still, it came back in this episode, and it was really good. The Stones of Blood, oh, this is a fantastic story, the 100th Doctor Who story, actually, and it kind of brings back the gothic horror of the Hinchcliff era, with a bit of comedy from the Graham Williams era, and it does have its funny moments, even though I feel that the funny ones are maybe slightly out of place at points, um, and it does kind of mix around, but it's still a really good story to watch, it's really atmospheric, I love the augury, um, just everything about it's really, really entertaining. It's got a bit of a mystery going. And even though the story kind of switches to something else uh, over halfway through, it's still, you know, it works. You move from one thing to the other pretty well. And yeah, it's a really enjoyable episode. I love these two both, but there is one in this season which is better than them. So, at the best spot we have the Androids of Tare. Wow, this story is absolutely amazing. David Fisher really shines in this. I mean, I know some of his scripts haven't been the best. I mean, I did quite like the Stones of Blood, but uh, the creature from the pit's a bit... Eh. But still, this is a fantastic story, and, well, how couldn't it be? I mean, kind of, you know, old kings and queens and counts, countesses, that kind of thing, is what the BBC drama department is very famous for. And even though it's sat on a different planet with some different customs, it works fantastically. Uh, again, the world building in this, even though it's not by Robert Holmes, it's got some really good world building. I know exactly what's going on here. I love all the characters. They really get me engaged into it. And it's just a really, really enjoyable episode. I can't quite put my finger on why I like it so much. It just clicks with me you know it's just one of those stories which just clicks with you and just gets you in like it grabs you tears you into the story and then one and a half hours later spits you back out and you're like wow that was a fun experience so anyway that was the key to time season an excellent season even though i do say so myself and yeah i highly recommend you go watch this if you haven't as there's some really funny really entertaining and really engrossing stuff here and definitely the best of the graham williams era and to be honest I'd like to say it's kind of the end of the great era of the classics, as in I kind of think that 1963 and 1978 was the golden age, with the exception of season 9 and season 15, which I don't like too much. But oh well, uh, that was it for today's video, and see you back next time in another one.